Hmm? You look like you need some help. Welcome. I will teach you how to do convolution using the graphical method. Alright, welcome. So we're going to do an example to help you understand convolution. So here is the problem. Find the zero state response of a linear time invariant system to x of t equals the impulse of u of t minus u of t minus 3 if the impulse response of the system is h of t equals t squared of the impulse u of t minus u of t minus 1. So the first thing you want to do is draw out the signals. So first we have u of t and hopefully you know how to draw impulse signal but I'll show you right here so we have 0 1 2 3 and the impulse can only be 1 or 0 so 1 now you just have to look at it so u of t and then minus u of t minus 3 so this is uh, essentially just 1 and it's not being multiplied by a constant or coefficient like this t squared. So it's going to keep being 1 at the start of u of t which is basically 1 u of t and then at t minus 3 it stops. So that's the function x of t. Our next function, h of t, it's going to be kind of difficult to draw, but you can take it in steps such as drawing it one by one. So first we want to draw this u of t minus u of t of 1. That's simple. It's basically the same thing as we did over here. Goes up 1 and then at t minus 3 it goes down. Let me explain it again. See 1, 1, this is basically 1 u of t so it's 1. Minus 1 so it's down. Hopefully you see that. And now we're going to do u of t minus u of t minus 1. So 1 till 1 and then it goes down. However we are not done yet. This is not the complete drawing of h of t. So we're going to draw the next part which is t squared. So let me just label this. This is u of t minus u of t minus 1. And the next part of h of t is the t squared part. Hopefully we all know that t squared is a parabola. So now when we combine this, our h of t let me this as 1 and 2. So now combining these two h of t graphs, you would get something that looks like this. Which is basically like a lopsided triangle. So now that we have this, we have to choose what to shift. Now we need to choose which shape we want to shift. Alright, so normally you would choose which one to shift, you know, flip and shift to find the area underneath that function. In this case we're going to choose x of t, but it doesn't matter which one you choose, you can do h of t. However, you have to be careful with the t squared because it's going to be um, tau minus t squared at different positions because you're going to shift that one because t squared will always be different every time you shift right but with the x of t since it's always going to be 1 it's more easier to shift alright so hopefully you have the other stuff drawn the graphs drawn because now we're going to do the cases so for the first case case 1 it's going to look like this. So 
so remember I chose x of t to shift so here is h of t which is t squared and here's the one that I'm going to flip and shift so this now becomes t and this is t minus 3 fairly simple because you're just taking the points, reflecting it, and then shifting it. Alright, so now you have to integrate, but since there's like there's no area underneath the function or anything, we can already say that y of t for case 1 is 0. So over here, now to find the bounds, we have to just look at the function wherever t is. So over here, this happens for when t is less than or greater than 0. So now we're on to case 2. Now case 2 is we're going to be going into the fun stuff. So for case 2, we actually have something to integrate. So here we go, we have the triangle, right? That's our t squared. And now we want to shift the rectangle so that it finds the area on that portion. So here we have t minus 3 and then t. So now the area that we want to find is this. Now you're saying, how do you know when to stop stop shifting or when to stop moving it? It's like sampling. You don't if you put it right here, it would be the same as integrating from the same um, area underneath that curve. Or not curve but shape. So if you have it over here, it's still the same. Like right here. here I'll, I'll show you real quick. So this is essentially the same as this so just be consistent and you'll be able to see if your answer is right because the bounds will match up from the previous bound to the next bound all right so now let's find the area underneath this portion so we have y of t is equal to from 0 see the t that's our bounds. We have 1 times delta squared because of this part. That's the function of d delta. Now hopefully you know how to integrate. So that becomes 1 third delta cubed. And then we integrate from 0 to t and this becomes one-third times t cubed minus one-third zero cubed so y of t for case two is equal to one-third one-third t cubed and now for the bounds we have to just look so zero t minus three and then um, t to 1. So the bounds for case 2 is just going to be 0 is less than or equal to t which is less than or equal to 1. See 0 t and then and then 1. So t is anything between this like I showed before. It doesn't matter. It may not look like it but if you have it like slightly close to one, that's basically the same thing as case two, so it covers everything. All right, hopefully you're writing this down. And now we're gonna to go to case three. So for case three, this is t squared. And now the triangle should be inside completely 
Uh, that was kind of bad. I'll just call this t. And this is t minus 3. So now the triangle is completely inside of the rectangle. So now we're going to find y of t, which is going to be 0 to 1 delta squared, basically the same thing, d, del d tau. Oh my gosh, I meant tau, not delta. So this is going to be the same thing, 1 third tau cubed. And then you just integrate, so 1 third tau cubed, 0 to 1 is equal to just 1 third times 1 cubed minus 0. So y of t for case 3 is 1 third. And now for the bounds. So we have t is greater than or equal to 1. And we also have t minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. See right here, 0. We don't want this part and we don't want that part. And then we can combine those. So we want t by itself, so just add 3 plus 3. This one becomes t is less than or equal to 3. So this is going to be, let me write over here. This is going to be 1, it's less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 3. And this is the bounds for case 3, and it makes sense. I mean, not graphically over here, but when you do this, it'll make sense. All right, now we're going to case four. So for case four, we still have the rectangle. Now the rectangle is on the other side, so we have this as t, this as t minus 3, this is still our t squared. So now we want the area on the right. Okay, so now we have y of t is equal to the integral. Now we have to look at here, this ends right here, so t minus 3 and it goes to 1. Then we have tau squared d tau, which is same, 1 third tau cubed. And now we plug in our bounds of t minus 3 and 1. This becomes 1 third minus 1 third t minus 3 cubed, and I'm not going to simplify that. Now for the bounds on this one, same procedure, just look at it. So it's 0, and then going to t minus 3, which is greater than 1. And we can't have this minus 3, so add 3 to both sides. Hopefully you know the inequality rules. So this becomes 3 is less than or equal to t, which is less than or equal to 4. Now for the final case, even though you don't really need to do it because you should know what would happen. Case 5. Now case 5 is the end of the case. So we have the triangle again the t squared, remember that? And now here's the triangle. It's outside. So right here, y of t is equal to zero. And this is going to be t minus three is greater than or equal to one. See, this, this area out here. So this is going to be plus three so for this case, t is greater than or equal to 4, and it makes sense. 
So now we can write the answer in piecewise form. So hopefully you end up with this. And now how you can check your answer is right and if you didn't miss a case is because see we have zero, so zero elsewhere. So zero and then to one, then one, one to three, and then three, three to four, zero elsewhere. And that's how you know you did convolution using the graphical method the right way. Hopefully you found this video helpful and good luck on your signals and systems.